Hello sports fans, welcome to Super Sports Central. Today we have my week 11 college football predictions. So last week I had a record of 13-7, and 7, which brings my overall record on the season to 145-38. and 38. Starting off this week on Friday, we have Colorado visiting USC. So this is a major mismatch right off the bat. USC is the top team, a top 10 team, and Colorado is one of the worst teams in the country. Also, USC has a, a high-flying and high-scoring offense, and Colorado has the second-worst defense in the country, giving up about 40 points a game. Colorado also has a brutal offense, the third-worst scoring offense in the nation, only scoring 15.6 points a game. This should be a complete blow. USC dominates every aspect of this game and wins 56-3. Moving to Saturday's games, we have Notre Dame against Navy. So this game is actually going to be in Baltimore. Notre Dame hasn't been amazing this season, but they've been a lot better recently, and they're coming off a dominant win over Clemson. Navy hasn't been that good this season. They're only 3-6. And, and obviously, as we all know, they're a triple option team. And obviously, they haven't just been that good this season. So I have Notre Dame easily winning this one, 37-14. Up next, we have Ohio State hosting Indiana. So Indiana's been really bad this season. They've lost six straight, and now they go to Ohio State. They should get absolutely destroyed by Ohio State. Now, Ohio State's coming off a 21-7 win over Northwestern, and even though the conditions weren't great, they still they still should have won by more than 14 points. I think Ohio State gets a more convincing win over Indiana, and this time they dominate, winning 49-10. Up next, we have Tennessee hosting Missouri. So Tennessee lost to Georgia last week. But they could still easily make the college football playoff, but they will need to win out. And the more convincing win, the better. So now, Missouri isn't that good, but they do have a pretty good defense, which might be able to slightly slow down the high-flying Tennessee offense. But Tennessee should still rather easily win this one, 45-13. Up next, we have Arkansas hosting LSU. So this is a game I would keep an eye on. It could be a wet-down game for, LS, uh, yeah, for LSU after their win over Alabama last week. And they're also on the road in Arkansas. And Arkansas hasn't been great this season, but they're still a solid team. LSU's been getting going recently. In fact, they've actually had a lot of success running the ball. And now they're facing a team that struggles to stop the run. So I could see Arkansas with the upset, but I think LSU keeps going and keeps their hot streak going as they defeat Arkansas by a score of 36-28. Up next, we have Illinois hosting Purdue. So the Big Ten West is a complete mess right now. Illinois currently leads, uh, leads the West, but that could all change with a loss to Purdue. And Purdue was really bad last week in a 24-3 loss to Iowa. Now they face another really good defense in Illinois, which is actually the best defense in the country. Illinois is coming off a loss to Michigan State. And this is a game I feel could go either way. I think it's going to be a low-scoring defensive battle, but I have Illinois getting the win because their defense is a lot better than Purdue's. And Illinois bounces back from their loss to Michigan State as they defeat Purdue by a score of 22-16. Up next, we have Vanderbilt visiting Kentucky. So Kentucky hasn't been amazing this season, but they've been pretty good. The offense hasn't been that great um, because they don't have a very good rushing attack. And while the Kentucky offense hasn't been very good, I think they should still be able to score enough points to beat Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt is a team that gives up 38 points a game. So Kentucky will easily defeat Vanderbilt, winning by a score of 37-13. Up next, we have Michigan hosting Nebraska. So, Michigan has been very good this season. They're playing their style of football, playing good defense, and running the football. And if they do that this week, that's going to lead them to victory against Nebraska. Nebraska has a really bad rushing defense, giving up over 180 yards per game on the ground. And I don't think Nebraska's going to be able to score much against a good Michigan defense, especially when Nebraska's going to be without their starting quarterback, Casey Thompson, who's out with an injury. I have Michigan dominating this one, winning 48 to nothing. Up next, we have Ole Miss hosting Alabama. So Alabama's coming off a loss to LSU. And now they have two losses on the season, which essentially eliminates them from college football playoff contention. Ole Miss had an extra week to prepare for Alabama. Um, but you still don't want to play Alabama after they're coming off a loss. Because they're 7-0 in the regular season after coming off a loss since 2014. And now Ole Miss has a tremendous ground game, one of the best in the country. But Alabama has a pretty good run defense, only allowing about 100 rushing yards a game. So if Alabama could shut down the Ole Miss rushing attack, I like their chances to get the win because Ole Miss does not have the offense to keep up with Alabama's offense if they can't run the football. And I have Alabama getting the win here, bouncing back from their loss to LSU as they defeat Ole Miss by a score of 38-28. Up next, we have NC State hosting Boston College. So Boston College hasn't really been that good this season. 
They've lost four straight, and NC State's coming off a win over Wake Forest, um, where true freshman quarterback MJ Morris was pretty good. Now, NC State has also been good overall as a team this season, and I think that's going to continue with a win over a bad Boston College team as NC State gets the win here 41-7. to Up next, we have Louisville visiting Clemson. So Clemson really needs a big bounce-back performance after they were destroyed by Notre Dame last week. And Louisville hasn't been great this season, but they've been a better... A recently riding a four-game winning streak. Now, this is a big game for both teams. Clemson has struggled offensively, especially last week, and Louisville has a pretty good defense. So I can see this being a upset, but Clemson has won 38 straight games at home. 38 games. That's quite the streak they got there. And I think they're going to send that to 39 as Clemson wins this game by a very close margin, winning by 1 point, 31 to 30. Up next, we have Penn State hosting Maryland. So Maryland hasn't been that great this season. They're coming off a loss to Wisconsin where they just weren't that good. And this is another game where I could see an upset. But Penn State has been pretty good at running football this season. And Maryland has struggled to stop the run. So I think this could be a close game. And I think it will be a somewhat close game. Penn State gets to win here at 33-24. Up next, we have a big game. And that is Tulane hosting UCF. So this is a really big game for both teams. Both teams are ranked. And the winner has a clear path to the uh, American Athletic Conference Championship game. And this is a big test for both teams. So UCF has a great offense, but Tulane has a great defense. UCF has a great rushing attack, averaging over 230 rushing yards a game. And while Tulane does have a pretty good defense, the rushing numbers are an elite. They give up about 127 rushing yards a game. So now I could s easily see this game going either way. It's a true coin flip for me. I'll take Tulane because the last time uh, UCF went on the road... To a hostile environment, which was against East Carolina. They got absolutely destroyed, losing 34-13. I think this game will be a lot closer than that. I think it will be lower scoring because UCF also was a pretty good defense. Uh, but I'll, I'll take Tulane getting the win here at home over uh, UCF, winning best score of 24-20. Up next, we have Mississippi State hosting Georgia. So this could be an upset here for Mississippi State um, because Georgia's coming off a big win over Tennessee, so it could be a letdown game. It's in prime time in Mississippi State, a place where Mississippi State has not lost all season. Um, but now, I think Georgia's just too good to lose uh, to Mississippi State right here. They're the top team in the country for a reason, and they're going to be a knockoff to Mississippi State, but it will be very close. I have Georgia winning this one game, winning this game only by a touchdown, winning 31-24. Moving on, we have Baylor hosting Kansas State. So Kansas State's been all over the place recently. They had a narrow loss to TCU. Then they destroyed Oklahoma State, and they had a comeback attempt to fall back, uh, fall short last week against Texas. And now the key for Baylor here is to slow down the Kansas State rushing attack. And Baylor has a decent run defense, allowing uh, about 127 rushing yards a game. And if Baylor wins this game, it'll make the Big 12 race very interesting, with TCU, Texas, Baylor, and Kansas State in the mix for the Big 12 title game. There's others that aren't mathematically eliminated yet, but those are the four realistic options. So now I could really see this game going either way. Baylor's got a pretty good offense, but Kansas State's got a pretty good defense. Kansas State's got a pretty good offense, and Baylor State's got a pretty good defense. So Baylor's home, and I think they're going to sneak out with the win here, but I could easily see this game going either way. I'll take the upset. Baylor gets the win here 34-31. Moving on, we have Washington visiting Oregon. So this is a big game for both teams. Oregon's been really good since their week one loss to Georgia. And Washington's been a little bit up and down this season, but they're coming off a win over Oregon State. Both teams have good offenses. Oregon's led by a Heisman Trophy dark horse, and that is Bo Nix. And Washington is led by the passing yardage leader in the country, Michael Penix Jr. Washington throws the ball a lot, averaging 370 passing yards a game. And Oregon's secondary isn't amazing, but it isn't awful. I think this is going to be a close game. I'll take Oregon getting the win here 41-37. Up next, we have another game that I think is going to be a shootout, and that is North Carolina hosting Wake Forest. So both teams have outstanding offenses. Neither team's a very good defense. Two great quarterbacks, Drake May for North Carolina, who leads the country with 31 passing touchdowns and also has only thrown three interceptions, and Sam Hartman for Wake Forest. And he's been good this season, although he's turned the ball over a lot, nine interceptions already with uh, three interceptions in each of the last two games. So now I think this is going to be a shootout with two great quarterbacks and two great offenses. And I think Drake May is going to be able to keep the ball safe and lead North Carolina to the victory over Wake Forest, winning uh, 48-45. But I can easily see this game going either way. 
Up next, we have TCU visiting Texas. So this is another extremely tough game to predict. If TCU loses a game in the regular season, it will be this game. It's a night game in Texas on the road. Um, I could see this game going either way. Both teams have great offenses. Um, they could score a lot of points. Neither team has a great defense, so I expect it to be a high-scoring game. This is very difficult uh, to pick because I don't know which Texas team we're going to get. Are we going to get the first half Texas team from last week where they went up 31-10 uh, before the half? Or are we going to get the second half team where they almost blew that 31-10 lead? So TCU is really good at coming back. And if they get down against Texas, it's not a big deal for them because they've been coming back most of the season. But I'm going to take Texas getting the win over TCU here. But this is another game I could see going either way, and it's a true coin flip for me. I'll take Texas 38-35. Moving on, we have Syracuse hosting Florida State. So, these two teams have completely changed their trajectory a few times this season. Syracuse started off really hot 6-0, now they've lost 3 straight. And Florida State also got off to a good start, then they lost 3 straight, and now they're back on the upswing. Both teams want to run the football. Both teams have about average run defenses. For Syracuse, we don't know if quarterback Garrett Schrader is going to play. And if he can't go, backup Carl, Carlos Del Rio, Del Rio Wilson will start in place of him. And now I could see this game going either way, especially because it's in Syracuse, in the Carrier Dome, a very difficult place to play. But I'll take Florida State sneaking out with the victory, winning by a score of 27-23. Moving on, we have Utah hosting Stanford. So Utah is getting healthy with quarterback Cam Rising and running back Tavion Thomas returning from injury last week. And luckily for Utah, they might not even need to play the, the entire game. Stanford's so bad, they should dominate this game, and Utah will win, win 42-7. In our final game of the week, we have UCLA hosting Arizona. So Arizona's defense is not very good. They've lost four straight games, and in those four games, they have given up an average of 47 points. And UCLA is coming off a game where they scored 50 points, so obviously a terrible matchup for Arizona, and UCLA will get the win here easily, winning by a score of 48-20. So those are my Week 11 college football predictions. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications so you don't miss any other upcoming videos. I will let me know in the comments below if you agree with my predictions, disagree, and why. Uh, make sure to check out the community tab of my channel where you guys can vote on who you think will win some of this week's big games. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I do my best to post as often as possible, and I will see you in the next video.